All right, in this video, we're going to go over service items, how to set them up, the best way to use them, kind of more in depth than the basics video we showed before. Uh, so I'm going to go right into my services and my items list and come down here and create a new service item. So I choose the type services. Now, of course, when you choose this type, once you choose service, it can't be changed later. So make sure you have the right type. Uh, services are basically things that you bill your clients for or bill your customers for um, that are non-material, not product. Okay, so if you do printing, if you do any kind of custom setup, labor, installation, anything along those lines, that's a service you provide, then you want to set up as a service item. So I'm going to do one for installation. You can make it a sub item of another service item. So you can make it a sub if you want to, if you want to go more in depth. You can have multiple units of measure if you want to. All right. I prefer to do all of my items as double-sided items, meaning when you enter it on a bill, you can force it to hit a cost of goods sold account or an expense account. And then when you have it on a invoice or a sales receipt or a credit memo, it hits a income account. So I prefer everything to be double-sided. The way you get that going is you just check mark off right here. Use this in assemblies. Okay, and basically, you're not really going to use this in an assembly necessarily, but basically what you're saying is you want it to be a double-sided item. Okay. All right, so I'm going to say install services is my description. Notice when I type it in here and I push tab, it's going to pre-fill it into the sales information screen over there on the side. Now, the cost that you enter in here, that's just going to be your cost for a you know, preset cost. It's not going to be a mandatory cost, but if you often pay, let's just say $50 an hour to your vendors for installation services, you can put it in there as a, as a preset cost. What that does is it will pre-fill for you, which I'll show you in a second. It will pre-fill for you the service when it comes up on a bill or on a purchase order. It will pre-fill pre for you the $50 here. And, uh, but you can always change it, but at least you have a starting point. So if you put in here $50 and then you notice you get a bill for $75 per hour from your vendor, you can kind of have a trigger point like, wait a second, I thought we were supposed to be charged $50 an hour. Okay. You choose which expense account it goes towards. This can be a cost of goods sold account as well. So I'm going to put it to subcontractor expense right now. You can put a preferred vendor in here if you want to. It doesn't mean it forces you to put the, it to that vendor, but you can put a preferred vendor. Then you have your sales price here. So let's say we sell it for $100 an hour. It's labor, so it's non-taxable. And which income account does it go to? Subcontracted labor income, okay? So you have something in your income side, you know, services income, something on the income side that you'll, where you can make sure that the income's going towards. Now, when I said non-taxable because it's labor, of course, that varies by state and, of course, with construction, varies by commercial, residential, all that fun stuff. But whatever you have it the most, set the tax code there on an invoice, you can always mark it taxable, but this is just going to be the default. Okay. So setting up the service like this, the reason I like, again, to do it double-sided is it will allow it to hit the cost of goods sold account when you um, sell this item. I mean, when you purchase this item and then, or the service, and when you sell it, it'll hit the income account. So let's take a look at what that means. All right, let's say installation one. <laughs> okay, so now I go in there and I have from my homes, home list, I'm going to go ahead and create a sales order, let's just say, or an estimate. Services are better known for estimates. Okay, so it's going to be for the Robert Allard remodel, and I'm going to choose a certain class, and I'm going to say installation one here, and we're going to say a quantity of 10, okay? So notice here on the estimate, I can do a cost, I can do a markup, the markup's 100% because that's what it calculates based on what I defaulted, which was $50 for the cost, $100 for the sales price. So it defaults to this, but I can always change it. All right. And from this estimate, I can go in and create the invoice. But let's say I just want to create a purchase order and send it over to my vendor. 
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create the purchase order from here. All right. I choose my vendor that I purchase it from. All right. And now I can print this, email it out to my vendor. I need 10 hours of your installation services. And please set me up on your calendar. Okay. So now let's just say that our first bill comes in. And I get a bill from Bayshore Water and I choose that and it says, hey, wait, you have open purchase orders for this vendor. Would you like to receive against one of these? So hopefully the vendor puts for me on their invoice, the purchase order number. So I'm gonna say yes, select that purchase order. Notice how it's all the way back and tied to the estimate as well. Okay, it pre-fills for me, hey, you've got 10 hours of service on the purchase order for them. And it pre-fills all the information, what customer it's for, what class, which PO number it came from. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say they just billed me for four hours and save this. All right, so I'm going to say save and new. Now let's say it's a couple weeks later or a week later and I get another bill from Bayshore, so I'm going to select that. Do you want to receive against one or more of these purchase orders? I'm going to say yes again. Select that same purchase order. Say okay. And now notice my quantity drops down to six because I've already received four. Okay, so let's say they give me four more. All right, and I'm going to change it to a week later. And say save and new. Now I get another two weeks. I get another bill from Bayshore. All right, and I check it off and notice again, it's gonna say there's only two hours left on this work order, but let's say the bill was for four hours. That allows me to say, wait a second, it gives me a stopping point and say, triggers me to ask the vendor, we only had a purchase order for 10 hours, why have you billed me for 12? Okay, so that's a great way to track using services, to track your vendors as well, your subs as well. Okay, and then of course I can always go in and create an estimate for the remodel. I mean create an invoice for the remodel and it can go the same way where I can do progress invoicing. But let's just say I'm finished with this job, I just want to invoice the entire thing out. The items all flow through, the installation charge, everything flows through onto my invoice and I can send this out to my client. Okay, so that's why I prefer to use services as double-sided. Now, of course, if you only bill out for your services, you don't have sh any subcontractors that you do, that you farm work out to, then you don't ne necessarily need to use it as a double-sided item, but at least you have that option there so that you can kind of track your information more closely. Now, let me go ahead and save and close this and go back into my items list. Now, if I go to installation one and I do a control Q for a quick report, Notice here, this is what's so great about it. Notice here, it shows me I've got two bills so far that I recorded. Oops, let's see, actually, let's go to here. Three bills, there's my third bill. Three bills that I recorded against this uh, original estimate. So it shows me all the postings for that to, the, to that installation one charge. And it also shows me all my invoices here. So I can see, okay, so I'm making so far $500 on my installation one service. So you can get a quick report of all the installation one services that you do and all the money you spend on installation one. All right, so that's a quick run through of service items.